Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg, Basic Sorgonomics for this uh, May 27th, 2015. If you catch this in the morning, please check me out. If you're in the area, we'll be down at the hardware store in Allentown, the neighborhood, not Allentown, PA, the, the neighborhood here in Pittsburgh, uh, to talk with Chris O'Connor, Libsyn.com. She's uh, very active over there. Just so many things I can't remember right now because there's so many things. Uh, but anyways... <laughs> So uh, that'll be online, of course, uh, presuming uh, none of my equipment catches on fire and and, and such. Uh, but today I want to talk about, speaking of content, we're talking about podcasting, of course, usually on here. But I, I'm also dealing with a lot of YouTube stuff, and I, I like to kind of get very inside baseball. Uh, as you know, yesterday I did a show, or not a show, I'm sorry, a presentation about the basics of YouTube. And I glossed over some stuff about copyrights, etc. And uh, I found myself as a content producer. And not just a YouTube go uh, podcasting content producer. I, I'm making things. I, I'm I'm uh, doing productions uh, with and on behalf of, in conjunction with other people, doing some documentaries, doing some uh, professional wrestling production, and 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 other things that are not having to do with wrestling. And I'm at that point where I need to exact a little more control over things and uh dealing with that and actually this cropped up way back in december uh we had a production uh we uh, called refereeing 101 we had jimmy Kaderis, who is a uh, long i think 20 30 year wwf referee has done wrestlemania has been involved in a lot of them knows what the hell he's talking about did a seminar uh, here in town. We did an, uh, an interview on top of it. Uh, this is all part of uh, Joe Dombrowski and his productions, and and you know, on behalf of you know the, the Sorgatron Media. Uh, and somebody had taken that and posted it on YouTube, the entirety of the DVD. Uh, to which I was like, okay, what the heck can I do about this? And it was an interesting discovery process. And you can issue a takedown notice, and and they can re re you know, uh, say back. And I, I've been on the other end of this for years. And many of you are, if you're putting content on YouTube. Um, and, and generally, if you're not familiar with the process, if you're not putting stuff on YouTube, uh, let's say if I included, let's say at the beginning of my podcast, I wanted to include uh, a song, uh, you know, something from, geez, what's something that's not embarrassing? Let's say Limp Biscuit. Oh, there we go. Judge me. Uh, so let's say I, I added uh, Limp Biscuits Faith as as my uh, uh, introduction to my my new show talking about religious values, <laughs> and and that's going to go up there and 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 you know probably get tagged by the company that that handles the license for Limp Biscuits music. Uh, Geffen or whatever the heck it is, some record label, uh, Sony, I don't know. Uh, and you're going to get tagged, and a couple of things can happen. Depends on what they decided. They can pull your content. They can block it. They can shut it off. Or in what happens in most cases, you'll start getting banner ads uh, on your video. Then that money goes to that record company because it was a part of your video. This is content ID. And I've refuted stuff because sometimes I'll get connected with stuff. Because if you had ever had music on CD Baby, which was this uh, website that helped you sell CDs if you were an independent artist back in the day. Now, uh, stuff that I've submitted as part of my group a few years ago, I will get a small minuscule check every once in a while with Spotify and iTunes and all kinds of stuff listed on it. And that includes YouTube. CD Baby will tag my content all over YouTube. Or in this, in, in, in which they have, I, I've put up our own performances on my personal channel, and it gets tagged CD Baby as a provider, and and uh, and 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 which is interesting, but I don't worry about it because I realize, well, that money actually will come back to me and such. But uh, so there's that. Uh, we have, of course, music from a friend right here in Pittsburgh. Played a lot of shows with them. Great guy, Basic Sickness. Same process, CD Baby, there's a song, and it's the introduction to all of our stuff. I don't know how many times I had to say, no, I have rights to use this. Please do not tag this. Please let me leave this on here, and, and I'm hoping one of those videos takes off with ads attached, and then I make some money off of YouTube, right? Uh, but I have permission to use this music, you know, no holds barred, uh, for these specific things that I do, including the intro, outro to a couple of my podcasts at this point, right? Uh, it's just a thing to help 
get his name out there and get his music out there a bit and help a friend out. And he helps us by having a great introduction that that sounds professional. It's he did it. It's 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 amazing. And we pair it with some great uh, visuals that we got from a friend. Um, but uh, but to be on the other side of that and, and the, the the hurdles I'm finding and I don't know you know I'm really just kind of diving into this side of things is very new to me so if you're somebody out there that knows a little bit more about how that works uh, about like how do I deal with my content on there um, so you know there's of course the individual takedown notices and I've seen a couple instances and I've said you know and and we've been very lax when it comes to especially the wrestling stuff. And uh, it, we're kind of formulating, okay, what is our policy? You know, I'm talking with the promoter and I say, what are we doing about this? What can we do about this? What are we telling the guys that they're allowed to do about this? You know what I mean? Um, because some people think, you know, uh, well, it's a video. I can take this out DVD and put it up somewhere. And, and who's going to stop me? Well, content ideas, for instance. Uh, that, that's what the, the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, is about, you know. And there's a process to it. And I'm becoming very familiar with that process right now. And, and, and dealing with a few things with that. And um, But generally what I want to do for myself, for these promotions, there's a lot of content out there. A lot of it gets out there. You, you, indie wrestling, it's not hard to find indie wrestling. And I've, I'm of the mind when it comes to that, I don't mind a match floating around out there. I don't want to shut them all off. Certainly not shut them all off. But myself and my clients own the rights to it. So, and still, when I look at a video that has thousands of hits, and then I look at how many people are buying our digital downloads and our DVDs, there's a definitely a disparity there. That's not leading into sales. So what can I do about it? I, again, I don't want to pull things. I don't want to be like, oh, those are the guys that pull your stuff. You know, you'll never see it. Then nobody's going to see the content. Nobody's going to venture into it and see that bug in the corner and be like, I wonder what these guys are about. Google search it and oh, look at all this stuff. Look, CM Punk was a part of this, you know? You know, you want to be smart. You want to allow that stuff to get out there. I had a friend, he uh, frequents a uh, wrestling board, a wrestling you know, user group, I don't know, so, message board, something. He was a Reddit group. And then somebody actually had linked um, one of the shows, one of the big ones, I think it was Super Indie. And I was like, really? I was like, is there a lot of discussion? You, is there any way, do you know how many people maybe downloaded it? And he told me, yeah, I think like 600 people downloaded it. You know, it'd be nice if I had 600 people bought the show for everybody involved, right? And you got to think, you know, me getting this thing stuff built up around here, you know, that's money for this. It's money for the promotion that puts on the show that pays for part of the production at least, you know. And that helps. Great. We can bring more wrestlers. We can get more exposure. You know, that helps everybody. And it'd be nice. But in the meantime, it's like, it's on a message board. What am I going to do once I start retaining lawyers and can track that down and have it taken down? Not worth it. Not at this stage. Certainly not at this stage. Would I really get the money back for the 600 purchases, quote unquote? And I always think, you know, 600 people downloaded it. Those 600 people, not in a million years, were ever going to buy it. But they're aware of it. And maybe something will come down the line that's not so easy for them to get. Because maybe we made it harder. Okay. It's a dance. It's a dance. And a lot of uh, bigger companies are figuring this out. Figuring out what do we do free versus another. Do, what do we just write that off to advertising. You know, Game of Thrones is uh, notoriously highly stolen. And they wear that as a badge of honor. I just want to know what's out there. So I'm writing to an issue because whenever I, I go apply for copyright or content ID, because of the nature of what I do with my rest of my production, sometimes there's music that gets tagged. And the way that I can apply that I can see to content ID is I put in my information and I say, I'm doing this, I'm a good upstanding business and, and this is the kind of stuff and I list the kind of stuff that I have. But apparently, from what I understand, what they're doing is looking at the channel I signed in with and that content. I didn't post the content I wanted to sell. Absolutely not. Why would I have? But that's what they're looking at. And that's what they think I want to sell because this is YouTube's algorithm automated process, whatever. So 
If anybody has an answer out there for me, this is my big lead in for a question, but this is the interesting thing that happens. I just want to kind of share my story of, of this investigation and the state of content ID, at least for somebody who's a smaller producer like me. And maybe you're somebody out there making a movie. Maybe you're making a documentary. Maybe you're uh, uh, shooting MMA and you're like, okay, now what do I have to worry about? You know? And looking for options. Because I would love to take advantage as a copy, as a, as a content holder of how do I sell on YouTube? How do I do this? How do I do that on YouTube? Use that platform. But... I need to understand more and it feels like you're not really able to there's not a lot of help for you unless you are WWE and you you can you know who to pick up the phone that secret phone line right who do you talk to be curious anybody out there work for Google <laughs> can forward me to the right place I'd really appreciate it uh, but I, I, I hope uh, if you have any questions about this stuff I'm discovering, maybe stuff I haven't considered. Maybe I'm just looking at this uh, the wrong kind of sideways. And I want to solve many problems in one stroke here. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Content ID, YouTube, DMCA. It's a bane, but we all have to live with it. And now I'm getting on the side where it actually will be helpful as a content maker. It's really curious as I've been fighting it and shaking my head at it for the last 15 years as a lesser producer i guess you could say but let me know your thoughts sorgatron.com at sorgatron on twitter you guys have a good day this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com